What is going on everybody? Welcome to another Python Panda Sentiment Analysis and Finance video. In the last video what we were working on was this automatic moving average uh, function where we dynamically generated a moving average calculation based on the number of updates the company got. Now in this video what we're going to do is we need to formulate a strategy for um, our trading. And so I think the one of the easier ways to formulate a strategy is just to base it on the moving average crossover. So if the shortest moving average is higher than the second shortest, is higher than the third shortest, is higher than the longest or largest moving average, then that would be the most bullish situation. And then from there, we could we would have less bullish um, scenarios all the way to bearish, and then we would want to sell. Um, so in the most bullish situation, we would want to buy four, let's say, buy four stocks. In a slightly bullish situation, maybe we want to buy three, and so on. So that's what we're going to do first. And then after we've done that, after we've created this function, because we can't really do this very easily in pandas, we can't make that kind of an operation with pandas. What we're going to do is map that function to our pandas data frame, and that's going to allow us uh, to be able to do this. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we need to create this strategy function. So I'm going to call this one define calc underscore position, and it's going to have uh, four parameters. That's going to be MA1, MA2, MA3, and MA4 that we pass through here. And then it's going to ask a bunch of questions. Um, if MA1 is greater than MA2 is greater than MA3, and, then, and so on, all the way down in a few different combinations. We could get really huge with like a whole bunch of combinations, but for now, let's keep it kind of simple. Now that said, I don't really see any educational value in making you guys copy and paste. Um, well, just copy what I write, because actually what I'd rather have us do is just copy and paste. So writing all this out is kind of pointless and, and a waste of my time and your time and everyone's time. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to put, I'm going to copy and paste this myself, and then I'm also going to copy and paste it in the description of the video. So that way we don't have to waste a bunch of time typing all this out. There's no point. So I'll put that in the, this in the description of the video. So if it's not there, someone remind me, and I will get it added uh, to the description as soon as possible because I like to forget these things. So anyway, so what this function does is as we pass through the moving averages, it basically just asks, what is the case and if there is no case it just returns a zero and but if there is a case it returns you know these numbers now eventually we might have it return like none or something like that so it's not a number but for now we'll just leave it at zero and anyway we just don't have that many uh, options here and I'm really thinking we probably should return none but we'll see about that anyway um, Because probably, we'll, yeah, we'll have it return none, I think, for now. And we'll see, that might cause problems down the road. But we'll have it return none if it's not one of these. Because there's obviously a lot more combinations than what we've shown. And what we're going to end up doing down the line is ask what's the difference between the two numbers. And that's how many stock we need to move. Anyway, um, enough on that. Now that we've created this function, what we have to do is we have to map this function to our pandas data frame. So we're going to use map to do to do just that. So once you so once we've copied and pasted that, we need to come down to single stock auto moving average, and underneath DF equals DF from starting point onward, that's where we need to map this because we can't ask these questions without these numbers, right? So before the starting point, MA4 doesn't is even like a legitimate number, so we have to do it after this point. So once we've come to that point, what we want to do is we're going to I guess we can also we're gonna have like a bunch of um, a bunch of columns here at this point. So let's go ahead and get rid of the original moving average columns. There's really no point for them right now. So we'll do del df uh, ma100, and we'll go ahead and delete the other three. So copy that, paste, paste, paste. Uh, 250, 500, and 5,000. So we'll have those deleted now. And once you've deleted those, now we're ready to actually map this function. And the way that we're going to do that is the following. So we do DF POS for position. And we're going to say equals map. And for map, we want to put in the function that we're going to map. So that's going to be calc underscore uh, position. And then we have to do comma. And now we put the parameters to this function. And that's going to be DF MA1 all the way to MA4, so I'm going to highlight that, copy, paste, 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 two, three, and four. 
Okay, so now that what that's going to do is it's going to map the result or the return of this function at each step of the way to the column df position. So that's all we do there. And now just to see that we did this, we'll do print df all the way to number 100 basically. And for now, let's not plot anything. So I'm just going to comment this stuff out here. And let's go ahead and run that. So hopefully that'll give us a position column that spits out the number that we want. And then none will just be not a number. So when we go to calculate any difference, um, it won't calculate any difference. So we, it won't trigger a sale or a buy or anything like that. So um, we'll wait for this to come up. And probably after that, we'll probably do that next part in the next video. And here we do, we do have our output here. So this is just, uh, what do we do? The, yeah, the first 100 rows. And so here, oh, well, this, since it's, there's so many columns, basically it's down here. So I made one, two, three, four. And here we have not a number, not a number, because this isn't these, you know, this um, combination is not one of the combinations that we chose. This is basically saying we want to be at a negative one position all the way through, um, at least for these 100 rows. So, so that's what it did. It created this column for us. And basically, we can use this column to actually start executing a trade based on um, these stock prices here, right, at these times and all that. So I, as you can see, we can start actually we're getting closer and closer to being able to back test this strategy without all the data that we need in this data frame. So anyways, that's going to conclude this video. In the next video, what we're going to be doing is actually calculating any difference. And then from that difference, we will actually calculate the necessity for a trade. And then when we do that, we can use the price at the time to calculate the necessity for the trade, or I mean the, the trade. And then also we can calculate our um, current, um, the current amount of stocks that we have how much those stocks are worth in total, how much cash we have, and then how much that value of that stocks is plus how much cash we have. And that gives us growth, okay? So anyway, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we'll continue that in the next video. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.